Hello guys, this is Maria Inés Photography. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a signature brush like this one. So you can put on your um, on your pictures at the end. It can also be your logo, but I just want I'm just going to show you how to make them into a brush and also how to make a watermark. Let me show you what it looks like. Uh, this so you can see this. This is my watermark. This is what I put on my pictures when I go on Facebook or some other social media that I want to protect my, my photo. Now, um, this you can also turn into a brush itself, but I'm just going to teach you two separate things. So one a brush and the other one a watermark. All right? So in order to start, I first wrote on a piece of paper how my signature um, would look like. Now, this can be your logo, um, so it can have as many... Um, little things, uh, drawings or whatever um, as you want. I'm just, um, I just keep it simple. I just like my signature and handwritten signature. Um, this is just a picture. You can also scan it. I just didn't have a scanner so I just took a quick picture. All right. So to start with I'm just gonna make a really rough selection around it. That was quite close. And then copy and paste it. And then I'm just gonna delete the background. Uh, now, at this point, you can use any selection tool that you are com more comfortable with. You can go with the um, um, selecting, what is this, quick selection tool or magic wand tool or whatnot. I'm just going to use the magic eraser because I think that's just going to do a very quick um, and easy um, job. Now, um, something that I should have mentioned is that it's important that you use quite a thick um, line. I used a permanent marker fine point uh, pen marker um, because you don't want to use just a little you know, normal pen because there's going to be too thin and one is going to be hard for your selection and two is just going to be super super thin as you can see in my in my picture here let me show you it looks quite thin so it almost looks like it was a you know a fountain pen <laughs> pen of, of, or of sorts so don't worry about looking it too thick and too clunky or whatnot. It's not going to look like that. Just for the selection portion, then it's important that it's thick enough. All right, so um, make a quick selection. Well, that did a really good job. <laughs> um, now, something that is important to do is to eliminate as much as you can any traces of the background paper because anything, absolutely anything that stays behind will become, whoops, will become part of the brush itself. So I'm not gonna spend too, too much time on it. Just make sure that you do, sorry, that you do delete. Ah, my Photoshop has gone crazy. That you do delete everything that it's um, left behind. Like this one over here in this little teeny tiny dot that looks minuscule but at the end will show up on your pictures and they will look nice so oh, there's something else here all right so at this point click on the layer holding the command or control key and then click on it and it creates a selection and that's basically all there is to making a brush so you go to edit <coughs> excuse me and then you go to define brush preset and there it is it shows up as exactly as as what you have here selected now, don't worry that it's black. It does not mean that it's always going to be black. That can be changed later on. It's black because I made it with a black pen, but don't worry about it. All right, so at this point, just name your brush. I'm gonna call it Signature 6, I think, because I have quite a few already. And then click OK. And there you go. See, it's already made, made the selection of my brush. So let's give it a try. Let's make that go. And let's make a new layer white. Oh, I need a new layer. And then I can make this go. Let's make it white and let's make our brush black. Oh, something that is important is start your original file, so your actual logo, or if you do it as me, handwritten. Make it big and start big because at the end you can always make it bigger or smaller. But if you start with a small original file, when, when you go big, it's going to be 
look very pixelated and it's not going to look nice on your pictures. Whereas if you start big, it's already big, good quality that if you have to go down to a smaller size, it will be perfect. But if you needed to make it big, then it's still okay. Like in this case, you know, it looks quite big. I can still go big and it will look okay. So let's give it a try. And there you go. See, it looks really cool. I like the fact that it looks like my handwriting. Not that my handwriting is pretty, but it just looks more, you know, um, like taking care of like you wrote it yourself almost on the picture. Um, at this point, you can all, uh, start playing with, like I said, you can, it doesn't have to be black because I wrote it in black. It can be pretty pink and it can be smaller or bigger if you want. You can play with the opacity in itself. You can play with the opacity in the brush or you can play with the opacity in the, in the um, layer itself. So you have a lot of flexibility on how you use it. Like if you see here, this is a little tip that I would recommend um, when you use it in your pictures. I always use it on a separate layer because that gives me that flexibility of, let's say I put it on the, on the picture but I, I think it's too dark so I'm just gonna lower the opacity so it's not so standing out. I have that option. I also have the option to do command T and I have the option to um, control what it looks like. I can make it bigger and smaller. Of course you can control that by the size of the brush and itself but if you have already have it in the layer then you can always play with that. And not, and not having it in the picture on top of the actual picture itself, like if I went to the, the, the layer of the photo itself and put it there just gives me that much more flexibility. So that's just a little tip if you want to use it like that. Alright, so let's go to the watermark. So the watermark has always has to be a transparent layer. I just gave you this black layer so you could actually see what it looks like. All right. Um, but what you do, or at least in my case, what I did was I made it with my own signature and then I just put a, a rectangular shape there with a low opacity color. Now, there were some people on Facebook that were talking about that their, their logo was to a different color and they wanted to do um, the watermark with one color here and one color there. Um, you can do that. That's not a problem. The thing is, um, because this will be saved as a PNG file, changing the color afterwards will be more difficult. What you could do is make it an action and have it so that you can actually change the color before it becomes um, a PNG file. You can do that or you can actually make your, PN your watermark, let's say, into a brush itself. I just use it as a watermark, I guess because I've always used it as a watermark and I really haven't bothered to make it into a brush, but what I'm saying is it is a possibility. Um, what you could do is um, keep it as a PSD file always and then you can change the colors if you want and then just save it as a PNG. It's more work, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do the, the watermark like I did it. All right. Um, let's start with a new file. So you go new. And again, like I said, what's important is that it has to be a transparent layer. All right, don't worry too much about the size. I'm using a 72 and it's quite okay. I guess you can start again also big and then go small if you want. Let's, let's try a 150, all right? It's a little bit bigger. All right, so again, you go and use your brush. For the sake of easy, easiness for the eyes, let's make a layer. Um, let's make it pink so you can see it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, all right, so we start with our brush and we make it as big as we want again. Oh, the opacity is low, so I'm just going to do 100% opacity. All right, and then um, in a new layer, I made a rectangular shape and I filled it with white and then I lowered the opacity enough so that you can see the the letters but hard enough so that if you had a picture here it would 
block the picture. Now this this shape, the, the, the shape that you have here, can be anything. You can type in it, like for example, if you wanted to put your, your website here, um, yeah, you can put it there, website.com. You can also have it there. And you can, because it's a separate layer, again, you can lower the opacity so that it's not super, super. But the thing, is, the, the point is that it blocks the picture so people cannot copy it so easily. Whatever, however you want to do it, I this is what I use. Um, at the end of the day, what's important is that it's a transparent layer, so this layer cannot be there. And you save it as a PNG. And you do that by going down the menu in G and we're gonna call it watermark tutorial tutorial uh, two I think I have another one so and you click save um, I always say no to this I don't know what they are for so I just leave it at none and none and click OK and let's see if it works let's delete these layers for the sake of argument and leave it as a pink layer and then you click open or place you can use either one call the watermark tutorial 2 and open it now to bring it and here it is you don't see it but it is here and then you click command a to copy to select everything command c to copy and let's go to our pink layer and click command v and there you have it see so it's there and then you can move it around if you want and the um, what I would suggest again is to save so I shouldn't have deleted to save the the, the file that we that I deleted <laughs> yeah save this file so that if you want to make any changes you can like I said earlier if you wanted to change colors if you wanted to you know in five years or one year or whatever you change your logo or whatnot you can always change things around all right and then this one you would save as uh, PSD tutorial 2 Photoshop and there you have it you can always go back and change it so that's it guys I hope it was helpful and easy and and clear for you to do. I, um, if you have any questions, peel, please feel free to let me know and I can you know, be more clear about anything that you didn't understand or um, I can help you out also with uh, creating your own um, signature brush or your watermark. I hope um, this was helpful and give me thumbs up and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Hasta luego!